Today, I'm gonna to show you how I went from this to this. All right, guys, so first up, the reason you have dinoflagellates is because your nutrients basically bottomed out. Your nitrates went to zero, your phosphates went to zero, and what you need to do is elevate that and keep it elevated for a long period of time so your dinoflagellates will go away. So the first thing I started doing was I started testing my nitrates and my phosphates at least one or two times a week just to see where the levels were at and try to keep them stable. And then I dosed you know, nitrates and phosphates as needed. I aim to keep my nitrates at about 15 to 20 parts per million and my phosphates at 0.07 to 0.15 ppm. Now to do this, you're gonna have to make sure that you keep up with your testing routine and not be lazy about it because if you miss a week, your nitrates or phosphate could plummet and well, the dinos will just keep winning. The second thing that I did was I dosed phytoplankton daily. And for my 50 gallon total volume tank, I probably dosed eh, around 20 to 30 mils daily, which all I did was take the bottle out of the refrigerator, shake it up a little bit, and just pour a little bit into the tank. I didn't measure out anything. I just kind of dosed it by fill, which is perfectly fine. And along with dosing phytoplankton, I was also culturing copepods at the time. So when it came time to do the water changing and the cultures grew large enough to where I can pull out some pods, I went ahead and dosed those to the tank pretty much weekly. Now the copepods will eat algae, they will eat dinoflagellants, they will eat other nuisance algae in your tank, but it will take them a long time. I mean, they are microscopic, so you know, don't expect anything overnight. Another thing that I did to combat dinoflagellates was to reduce the time that I had my lights on on my tank. I went from 10 hours a day down to six hours a day. Now, I'm not entirely too sure if this actually helped for the dinoflagellates, but it definitely did help to slow the growth of some of the algae that I had in the tank. So overall, that's, that's a win in my book. I also added my algae turf scrubber that I had on my 75 gallon tank several years back, and I could just see all kinds of nasty different algae and cyanos and, and even some dinos growing on that little plastic sheet that's inside there. And this is the most recent time I had to clean the algae scrubber. I mean, just look at all that nasty green, the red, brown, the, all the yellows, just all the different algaes and just all the nastiness on this little screen here. And this definitely helped to combat dinos out of my tank. I started out running the algae turf scrubber the opposite of my tank sliding schedule, but then quickly realized that I needed to reduce it a lot because the algae turf scrubber was just essentially removing all the nutrients and everything I was adding into it and putting it on that sheet there. So I went from basically running the algae turf scrubber 18 hours a day, down to 12 hours a day, down to 10 hours a day, and now I'm only doing it six hours a day. And that thing is a beast. I mean, it's oversized. It's rated for, I think, like a 300 gallon tank. And so it's like almost 10 times the size of what I actually need for my tank. I also experimented with dosing bacteria to the tank, specifically Dr. Tim's Waste Away and his one and only bacteria as well as Microbacter 7 and even Vibrant. And the only reason I chose those was because that's just what I had. I didn't specifically go out and buy any kind of bacteria to specifically dose for dinos. I just used those because it's what I had. Now, I didn't do these regularly. It's just in the past, I tried the Dr. Tim's method to get rid of dinos. It didn't work. So I thought I might as well just try to dose several bacteria to kind of get a better biodiversity of bacteria in my tank to hopefully help with the dino flagellates. So I really can't confirm if this helped at all, but I just thought I'd throw that in there as well. Once my sand bed started to get really bad with dinos, and I mean, when the little strands were like five or six inches, I decided I'm gonna siphon the sand bed and have that water running straight to my filter sock. That way I'm not doing a water change, but I'm just siphoning out all that nastiness that's on my sand bed. Now that did clear the sand bed quite a bit, but I was using a 200 micron sock. I wasn't using like a 50 micron sock. And even if I was using a 50 micron sock for the dinoflagellates and the water to flow through, I still don't think that would have helped out because dinoflagellates range from roughly about 15 to 40 microns in size. So they still would have went through the 50 micron sock regardless. Once I realized I was just wasting my time siphoning the sand bed, making it look pretty for a few days until the dinos came back, I just decided to go ahead and pull the sand out completely. I mean, the dinos weren't growing on the rocks, so it had to be the sand bed, right? I pulled out all the sand, 
Several weeks went by, I didn't see any more dinos, but I did see a little bit of algae starting to grow on the bottom glass, which was to be expected. I mean, you got a fresh slate of clean glass and the light shining down on it, so you're gonna get something growing on it. And when I removed the sand bed, I was able to crank up my flow. I had two MP40s on the top of my tank, and I went ahead and moved them down to the very bottom of the tank, and I cranked them up even more, because eventually I was planning to turn this tank into an SPS tank. Then, one day I just kind of noticed little patches of dinos popping up here and there all on my rock work. So then I was pretty much at a loss for what to do and how to beat this. I was keeping my tanks nutrients elevated, dosing phytoplankton, doing copepods, I changed the light schedule, I added an algae turf scrubber, dosed bacteria, siphoned the sand, pulled the sand, did everything I could think of and everything that I saw everybody else doing on YouTube and beating it. The only thing I haven't tried yet was a UV sterilizer. And the only reason I didn't try those yet was because, I mean, those things are four, five, six hundred dollars. I mean, they're just, they're absolutely ridiculous. Then I started to think, I've got a lot of money wrapped up into the tank, sump, all the equipment, all the corals, the rocks, and all the time invested. You know, four or five hundred dollars is nothing compared to the thousands I've spent on equipment and corals alone. And after doing the research to find out which UV sterilizer I'll need for my tank, I went ahead and went with the Jabo 55 watt crystal water UV sterilizer. And I started looking on the forums, looking on YouTube to see what was the best way to hook up the UV sterilizer to my tank. Since, I mean, there's literally probably a million ways to hook it up to your tank. And the best way to hook it up, since I didn't have dinos in the sump, was to put the inlet on the display tank as well as the outlet on the display tank. That way the UV sterilizer was only going through the display tank where the dinos were. And let me tell you, it did not make the tank look good at all. I mean, you've got one and a quarter inch clear tubing going all the way down to the bottom of my tank, hooked up to a little pump, as well as another one and a quarter inch tubing just kind of hanging into the tank from the output side of the UV sterilizer. But hey, that's how you gotta hook it up if you wanna kill that certain strain of dinos that stays on your sand bed during the day and goes into the water column at night. I just wish I had that strain of dinos that the UV sterilizer works on. Unfortunately, after using the UV sterilizer for a month, absolutely nothing changed. You know, I thought the UV sterilizer was supposed to be like the end all for dinos, the end all for algae, for pest, ick you know, all that stuff, since that's what everybody posts on Facebook and YouTube, but if you read through the lines, you'll learn that there's multiple different strains of dinoflagellates. And I was one of the lucky ones to have the strain that a UV sterilizer doesn't work on. So naturally, my next purchase was to go ahead and get a microscope so I can identify which strain of dinos that I actually had in my tank. And from what I can tell under the microscope is I had two strains of dinos. Fast forward about three months and here we are today, dino free. These are all the methods I used to finally rid my tank of dinoflagellates after a little over a two year battle. Not all of them were necessary in my opinion, but if I had to narrow it down to what actually worked, I would have to say dosing nitrates and phosphates along with testing them a couple times a week, you know, to keep my eyes on the levels to make sure they don't bottom out was definitely key. A diverse population of bacteria will only help your situation. And as far as that goes, a healthy population of copepods and dosing phytoplankton too. Dinoflagellates didn't happen overnight, and it's not going to go away overnight either. You don't need a UV sterilizer, an algae turf scrubber, or even a microscope, although they are nice things to have. And if you want to support the channel and pick up some of these things, I have compiled a list of exactly everything I've used down in the description below. Some of them are affiliate links, which means I do earn a small commission if you purchase anything while using my links within 24 hours of clicking on it. It doesn't even have to be that particular item that I link to. You know, my ultimate goal is just to help you out in beating dinos. You don't have to buy anything to show your support. I just appreciate that you made it to the end of this video. If you don't mind, go ahead and tap or click on the like button if you learned something new today or if I helped you beat dinos. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing to catch all my future uploads. And if you do subscribe, don't forget to tap or click on that little bell icon that pops up and hit all. That way you'll be notified each time I upload a video. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to listen to what I have to say, and I'll see you in the next one.